this is actually part and parcel of our value system, uh, the idea of filial piety. It's a natural affinity to have the parents live with us. Multi-generation homes are more of a necessity than a lifestyle now. Uh, families grow and people age, and so there's a need for families to live with each other. The best thing we've done, frankly, is to build this three-generation home. I can't tell you how, how grateful I am that we've done it. I also like to have neighbours. I think it's good to always have the sense of a community where you live. shopping centre in the past was uh, known for porcelain because there was uh, large shops like Moongate, Quark Gallery, they were all stationed here in this complex and they are very well known antique dealers in the past. It's totally different today. Uh, there's uh, lots of uh, tuition classes and uh, schools for kids. It's a really like green oasis. Uh, I mean, we're right next to the Botanic Gardens and you have Dempsey up here. Uh, we're kind of sandwiched in between two places you can escape from the city while still being uh, really accessible. And uh, there's a really good community around here too. My favourite part about living here is the peace and serenity that I get. You don't hear buses or you don't hear school children running around. And, um, and yet, I know I'm just uh, five minutes away from the city. son, Jonathan, uh, was about to get married and um, I like the idea of you know, having him and his family live with us. But at the same time, I had to make sure that they have the independence as a new family. My wife and I were actually living in an apartment, uh, which I think we kind of outgrew. And I think we wanted a little bit more space and be close to our parents. I think it was important for my kids to actually grow up with grandparents to be around, instill in them certain values that I grew up with. My mom is actually quite strict and proper, so there's a certain level of decorum, which I thought it was important for my kids to have and learn from my parents. I wanted them to stay close by because we were getting older. Um, and as you get older, you have issues, you know, you, you know, all kinds of issues, health issues. And, you know, just to share with you a, a little anecdote, my grandson was very afraid of this little door that I had on the other side of the house. And so I went to over to, to take it away because he was very scared of this doll head. In my hurry to bring it back here, I dropped it and it fell on my foot. It just cut exactly where the ar little arterial uh, vein was. If we were alone, I don't think we'd be able to manage because I was freaking out. But because they were here, they came over. So with Jonathan's help and with my husband, we went to A&E in the hospital. It was exactly what I was afraid of, that if there's an emergency, that there isn't young, somebody young around. I think there was definitely a sentimental part of it. 
about tearing down the old house because there's a nice clean old house that I spent at least my formative years living in. But once I realized that having a house of my calling my own, designing it for my own, living with my parents, all that sentimentality kind of uh, went out the window. I think it was a challenge to ensure that the house had its own privacy. Uh, it is, well, a multi-generational home. So I think privacy was very important for all of us. So this is our entrance foyer that I share with my parents. Uh, we use timber trellis to allow for cross ventilation into the swimming pool area. To the right hand side is towards my living room and to the left is actually my parents' side. And this is our living room and dining room. We opted for an open concept to the design. We have a lot of musical instruments scattered through the house and the kids have actually enjoyed. Space was a challenge for this house, so we incorporate this hidden door into the timber feature wall. In this particular case, we had done a powder room into the feature wall as part of the design. My side has actually three bedrooms on the second story. Coming to my parents' house, we are greeted by a huge dramatic double volume space that my parents has actually uh, displayed a lot of artwork. We have an open plan for the dining living room and as well as a contained kitchen at the rear uh, with a back of house towards the, the neighbor's uh, property. And my parents has actually one bedroom, but a very large communal um, uh, family room, TV room area that's used as a mezzanine space overlooking the double volume space. And my brother's block is a bedroom upstairs and a sitting living room downstairs on the ground floor with a rooftop garden above. Uh, this is one of the most favorite parts of my house because I can do my work on the table. My parents and my dad especially can enjoy his koi pond. My mom can do her planting and the kids can be swimming in the pool and I can be on the table watching all of this. Basically, our needs and their needs are different. Their needs, they have three children occupying the rooms and there's a young couple. And uh, we have done it in such a way that it gives me an opportunity to display the art that I have and a sense of quietness, a sense of restive mood. I do like pottering in, in, with the plants. I have my little vegetable patch, patch in the, on the roof deck where I planted some kale and then all the herbs because it's useful. I think my dad uh, played a very important role uh, for me to become an architect. When I was growing up, he brought me to a lot of sites around the world to see some beautiful architecture, which actually has been very vivid in my collective memory about my childhood. I think it seems like a natural progression of him being an architect it has taught me a lot of things about life, to be upright, to be a person that's of a certain character. Working in my son actually is very good because I'm a broad design person. He's a, a detailed person. So, it works very well. I think if both have the same objective, then I think the product, in this case, a house, can be quite good. It's every boy's dream to become an architect for their own home. As I remember going to architecture schools, it wouldn't be fantastic actually design your own home. I think working with my father was actually quite easy. We had no complaints. I think we deferred to each other in terms of making decisions about the house. The only thing that we actually kind of argued about was maybe the swimming pool tiles. I wanted something a bit more slick, I wanted something a bit more black, but he wanted something a bit more blue. But I think he won because I think the swimming pool is actually quite inviting.
the house is definitely bought our family together, actually prior to Circuit Breaker. And because of the sheer fact we were all stuck at home together, we kind of forced our son to actually practice swimming. And we're proud to say that right now he actually can swim. My mom likes to bake. Uh, I, for one, I'm a bit of a sports lover. So I've actually even set up a small little tennis court, a mini tennis court along the driveway to actually hit the ball. To try to really have all these activities when we couldn't go out to really allow the home to be a place that we can actually enjoy all these activities together as a family. I think the best thing we've done, frankly, is to build this three-generation home. I can't tell you how, how grateful I am that we've done it. Apart from the practical things about, you know, economies of scale and all that, it's also values, you know, the value system. My son will make sure that they call us, you know, and say hi to and hug us, you know. They are taught from a very young age to respect your elders. I enjoy living with my grandpa and my grandma as we can always make, um, we always bake things together, um, make dinner and they make <laughs> amazing food. It's very comforting, not so lonely when you're doing homework, you can like, like, you know, ask people questions if you're not sure and you can always have someone to talk to. There'll be definitely be a trend in terms of uh, multi generational homes being coming quite a norm for a lot of landed houses, especially in landscape Singapore, when the land prices are expensive and they'd be difficult to attain a land as a new family, a young family growing up. Uh, I think we've had the opportunity to actually uh, have a lot of clients that come to us that want to live with their parents. And I think it is a good thing in terms of tradition and keeping a family bond together. And I'm a testament to it. Maybe this best example is the architect can bring families together, physically staying together, a space that, that gives you enough space to do your own thing. I think we have done a job well, you know, because uh, why live apart when you can live together? And uh, I think it's so much more, it's much better to live together. You have the best of everything, uh, very shady on both sides of the road. And uh, well, any time of the day when you come, you are not worried about strong sunlight on you. And uh, the air is very fresh. And you have a lot of alternative road to track along. You can make friends with all those retiree people or with the youngsters also. And of course, you keep, I keep myself fit. We live in a city-state, you know, there are buildings everywhere. There are not many places in Singapore you can go to without seeing a single building, and this is ideal. You can take a fast ride, a slow ride, and just enjoy being out by yourself with very few people around. Sometimes you just don't see anybody at all. The people here that have lived here a long time have developed deep relationships with their neighbours as well. Why I like living here is because it's a combination of both nature and the busy part of living. So it's like there are a lot of parks around, there's nature trails not too far from here. And then there's also a lot of recent developments such as the MRT.
cluster housing was introduced to allow architects to come up with a different form of housing other than these two typical types of development. The typical landed property other than the bungalow was the terrace house and the semi D. But uh, these were subdivided lots, so it meant that you're constrained by these boundaries and the parcellation of the land. So you don't really have a, a sort of communal uh, space. It was one of the initial projects that was submitted under the cluster housing regulations. So we actually had to research and see how we could play by these new rules. We actually didn't finish the development until 2011, most probably because it was something that was new and was not tested how well it would be received in terms of uh, saleability. When I first came upon this development, I was really attracted by, by the location, by the abundant greenery, the fact that uh, this development is nestled in the forest reserve. I also love the architecture that it is designed by Sunny Chan. The first thing is the, the, the concept. In Montima here, you have a cluster of four units, almost on a spindle, and then you have got eight clusters. So they're all kind of rotated around a, a communal facilities. With this concept, it is interesting because you, it offers certain vista into the forest reserve and in a way allows the nature to kind of permeate, to kind of connect with the whole development. I think this is really unique and also because of that, you find that the units doesn't relate to next unit in a very predictable geometric fashion. There is this controlled chaos in a way, which also kind of blends in very well with nature. I also love the fact that there is still a lot of outdoor spaces Unlike some of the uh, other cluster houses where, you know, uh, they're all packed together. Because of the uh, nature reserve, we thought that the material that we should be using is also natural. We thought that concrete was uh, appropriate, especially when we leave it as a raw finish without any sort of plaster and paint. And because of the process of pouring the concrete and how the concrete cheers, there's sort of different tonality in the concrete. So it looked quite natural and of course it looks quite raw as well. So it's not been done commonly and I think most probably this must have been the first housing of this category. But I think the, the owners also liked the idea of leaving the, the material in its natural state. And but actually has proven to be very popular with the residents. You don't have to worry about your the children, you know, running out in front of cars and so on. Well, it's, it's like your own garden, your own private property. So one of the most charming things about uh, Montima is this walking through this canopy of leaves to my unit inside. It's almost like a ritual, trying to ply open the leaves and to go into a form of a secret garden. So I think that the whole the whole experience of walking from my unit out to the pool is so charming. With this layout, we all kind of uh, leave the central communal space and the space that we have here is big enough for a very generous pool. On many occasions, residents do go out to the swimming pool and that's where we all get to know one another, to interact, to socialise. Beautiful. We are a little bit fortunate because here in this development, uh, we have nice neighbours. So I think, I think that makes a world of difference. We all had our experiences with nature. I think uh, our encounter with monkeys, with snakes, with wild boar. Personally, I had uh, three encounters of snake <laughs> in the last six years that we're here. So it's just part and parcel of living in, in such a place.
This whole thing about nature, when you wake up in the morning, you wake up with the sound of the birds in the air. When you're staring out in the balcony, you're looking at monkeys stringing from trees to trees. That is such a special, unique experience. The government was responding to this wish for letting people who own landed houses have more facilities than they would be able to have if they were to just live in a terrace house on its own. So it really combines the benefits of living in a communal type. There is uh, definitely an advantage or rather a, a plus point to living in cluster housing for families because children can get to you know, play in the pool, can make friends with neighbours. There is an aspect that somehow lends itself quite well to young children growing up. At the same time, challenges of living in cluster housing is sharing and a lack of privacy. It's no different really of living in a dense environment. Living in a condominium or in a, in a public housing, it's no different. So you just have to learn how to live with other people. With the cluster house, I think there is this, this immediacy, how you can just walk straight into the pool from your house without taking a lift. And I, I like that. I also appreciate the fact that it is a gated development, so there is this sense of uh, security, which is one of the reasons why I, I love uh, cluster house. I also like to have neighbours. I think it's good to always have the sense of uh, community where you live. So in all this respect, I think uh, cluster housing ticks all the boxes for me. You could say culturally or philosophically, we still embrace living on the land. It still means something to us. Maybe more so than in a city like Hong Kong, where they embrace density. Singapore has kind of a love-hate relationship with density. That's why we have our plants and our parks and all that. So the, the romance of living on land uh, still very much exists in Singapore. Holland Village for me is it's just so chic. As a teenager, I would come um, have coffee with friends or just hang out here. Being here for 13 years, you really see a lot of um, family and a lot of also uh, regulars that come here all the time. I've always been a big fan of Holland Village. Holland Market would be a little bit smaller.我们的顾客有很多个地方都有来这边买油林
our parents, yep. my mum and dad, and Farah's dad. Yep. Dad was uh, basically already living with us since 2011, since my mum passed away. Just prior to that, we figured, you know, Chi Seng's parents may need us to help them around a little bit as well. We look for a house for everyone to live with us. Mainly, it's because the old folks were getting older. At that time, our two daughters, my and Gia, they were still perhaps just starting on their teenagehood and we thought it might be good for the family to get together, live together and, you know, enjoy each other while it's all still possible. We just want to enjoy each other as a family. We floated the idea by my parents and they were quite agreeable to come and all live together as well. And so we started looking for a suitable home. We used to live in a condominium behind. We thought we'd just take a drive by this area and we saw that this property was on the market. We had a look at it and we thought it would be really nice with enough space, room for all the inhabitants. When the client built this house, it was purely designed as a lifestyle and for entertainment. It was really unexpected when a new family that bought over this place, when they came in, they saw the space and it was everything they wanted. We were commissioned by a developer and also a personal friend of mine um, to actually build a house to maximize the site coverage of the land and also to build a large communal spaces for entertainment. The site is an irregular site and that created a very interesting layout as well as an interesting form for the building. The idea of the two annexes was to create a courtyard in between so that natural light and natural ventilation could come in on all four sides of the building. All the floors are interlinked with one common staircase and a lift, um, except for the attic floor. The bedrooms are arranged in the two annexes. There are four bedrooms all together. One of the criteria was to have sizable bedrooms and to have every bedroom an ensuite and also to have flexible spaces for future expansion. The void actually was designed in such a way that it could be expanded into another room in future. The new owners decided to have the guest room converted into a granny room. It had a nice front lawn, so it was like a standalone pavilion, I would say, which actually was befitting for the new family. The bedrooms was designed to have wide enough walkways for wheelchair access, including the bathrooms. So this is to cater for the aged in the future and how befitting it is when the new family owners bought over this place, this was exactly what they wanted. When we first saw the place and we brought our parents to see it, my dad instantly fell in love with the room downstairs because he loves being with nature and that the room opens up to a garden.
mom was happy with upstairs room and they're on the same floor as the, their grandchildren, our daughters. It's easy for the interactions. And for Farhan and myself, we're upstairs on the third floor. We've got our own living area on the roof as well where we can have our friends over without making too much noise and bordering the rest of the household. The architect was pretty brilliant um, to begin with. Perhaps the previous owner um, who he designed for had in mind already to have his parents living with him as well. A lot of things were already pretty suitable. Sometimes my daughter in law cook with her Malay curry and all this. And sometimes I cook my Chinese way. They're still very fond of it. Whatever she cook, we eat. Whatever I cook, they eat also. Chi Sing's mum observes being vegetarian on the first day of Chinese New Year. I learned how to cook vegetarian food. Garlic and onions not allowed in Buddhist vegetarian cooking. I have had no idea before this how to cook without garlic or onion, <laughs> because to me it's like there's no taste, right? So, you know, it was really eye-opening. With the three discrete families coming together, it took a while to get used to. I think everybody has become comfortable with the situation about living together, getting used to each other's boundaries, to space. You know, sometimes we need our time. From the very beginning, they still do their own prayer. I have my own prayer also. I'm a Buddhist. When during the uh, uh, Hari Raya fasting month, they pray together in the evening. I also sit around here. There is no problem. Accommodation of any religion is not an issue if we respect each other and if we are tolerant. You can accommodate to be peaceful both around. I think in a way it's very good because as you know, Singapore multiracial, multilingual, multi-religion. All religion are actually teaching people to be good. You practice your religion, I practice my religion, and uh, we can share some, some info on it if you need to. Okay? Before they come and stay here, we always meet and uh, be together. So actually, we were together also most of the time. Okay? So there is no difference when we stay together. In fact, it became better, right? The relationship become closer and uh, actually more together at home rather than from different places. My favourite part of the house is the first floor living area where all the couches are because that's where I have my friends over and that's usually where my friends and my parents and sometimes my grandparents will come together and chill. And I've made a lot of good memories there and I've had a lot of good conversations so I think it's the part of the house that I'm most comfortable in. Now that we're all under one roof, it's nice to have everyone there and you wake up and you see your family and sometimes you're just walking around the house and you see them doing other things and it's fun to observe them doing things as well and it's really interesting. I wouldn't say moving in originally was difficult and it, I don't think it's ever been difficult to cope with all the different cultures and religions, but it was definitely interesting for my sister and I especially because during example Chinese New Year or Hari Raya, we would have the extended family come over and it was just quite fun to be so open about all like the different cultures. It was never really a challenge and it's been pretty easy to get along. What is it like in a multi-generational family? Well, the first thing that's easy is the shared finances, as well as ready babysitters whenever you need. 
We definitely have a lot of identities in the house, especially with the inclusion of my wife since 2016. Every level has its own identity and it's been a definitely a big experience as well. Football is one of the aspects that brings us uh, much closer as a family. My dad started a die-hard menu fan, so he passed his love down to us. So... He passed the jeans down. <laughs> yeah. The best part of living together is that everyone is together. It's one house with all of us. We have one another to talk to, to get through, especially during the circuit breaker. While it's challenging, it's also been very supportive. The relationship, I think, uh, between grandkids and grandparents uh, are very, very unique. It makes for a very, very holistic upbringing. From the children's angle, you know, when they come back, they have something to say and they're bursting to tell. The parents may not be around because they may be working, but the grandparents are around. The best thing about living together in a multi-generational family is many open channels of communication. When he came to us, he wanted to have his entire family, my family members, to stay together. It was one of uh, the mom's wishes to have the various siblings and herself to live together with her kids. The siblings, they themselves each have uh, their own family and they were staying in different parts of uh, Singapore. So it's uh, really trying to strike the balance between creating this communal space and also to have different our private areas for the respective family. We actively try to angle certain views. For example, windows do not look directly into the room of another block. So there was conscious effort to kind of orientate the building such that uh, each house has the kind of privacy. What we have here are the new two new entrances that we created for the house. So previously it was a dead end and we had to negotiate with uh, the neighbours as well to create these new entrances for the two houses. Pretty much every house had their own wish list which we accommodated. I think we even joke about having to design like almost 20 different toilets, right? And different wardrobes, you know, everyone have different needs. The clients were very understanding in allowing us to keep to a very consistent architectural language, very consistent color palette, very consistent look. So what we could achieve at the end of the day was uh, these four different blocks with kind of similar palette, but all having different needs within so this was one of the interesting challenges that we faced during the project. When we started to have four houses, uh, naturally we pulled this plot of land apart and uh, it was logical to create the communal space right in the middle, uh, which is what the garden is. When we visited uh, the house uh, not too long ago, they did tell us that they define the house very airy and it's really quite nice. And thankful that we did create four separate entrances for them because it kind of made things a lot easier for them on a daily basis to assess the house. Uh, and the central garden, of course, was uh, something that they were very grateful for because it kind of feels like they live within a sanctuary. Thank you.
corner terrace that's located at the kind of a T junction. It has a kind of a, a quarter of a circle shape. This makes it quite challenging. Uh, given the very ambitious uh, kind of uh, design program that they required, we had to accommodate living and entertainment spaces for both parents and their family. There is this requirement in which they wanted as much green spaces as possible in a tight site. The idea of a wrapping veranda came about firstly by referencing from the very green and lush uh, surroundings. As you can see on the apron of the roadside, there is this uh, green strip of land where these tall rain trees are being planted. So what we wanted to do was to kind of echo and amplify that lushness in the surroundings. Most of the existing green on the site was displaced by this large footprint and we thought it would be a good idea to kind of replace that green with this veranda on every level. This veranda starts from the car porch canopy and it winds up to this section and around the corner and uh, upwards to the uh, garden terrace on the rooftop. The third floor family area is uh, actually an extension of the roof terrace. That space actually was intentionally uh, trying to kind of merge seamlessly into the veranda space with the intention of creating opportunities, I suppose, for different types of interaction that can happen with the family. As people get used to and appreciate the uh, working from home, this study room or the home office will become more of a um, component in future houses. Therein lies the challenge also because you know, there will be more than one working person at home and children also need their own study space to study for exams. So that just means that perhaps we will be looking into more kind of multifunctional spaces. With the COVID situation, I think the boundaries between work and living is uh, blurred. And I think for maybe landed housing, it might be a little bit easier to kind of still create that kind of separation between work and living. But I think it depends on the kind of space you have and how to adapt to this. And of course, if you have lots of family members, then your uh, the kind of space that you can carve out to work could be a bit challenging. At the broader level, it's more important to see how multi-generation can exist in a community, right? So it's not just isolated within a house, but in a community. The biggest challenge of designing a multi-generation house in Singapore is the, the plot sizes. Because we don't have a large site, we can't actually separate the dwellings physically. So we have to kind of create separate zones within the house and in a way orchestrate the movement and the separation within one building. I think houses will have to be designed to be more adaptive. Uh, what I mean by that is that the houses will have to be easily retrofitted when the need arises and uh, easily expanded without uh, creating too much disruption. Future landed houses will try to maximise more. Not just building upwards to maximise the height control, but they're also going to build downwards uh, to make that piece of land count more. The quantum of landed houses in Singapore will remain shorter supply. What I do see happening is other types of housing wanting to borrow the features of landed houses. 
So the feeling of living with plants and uh, nature around you, which is a kind of integral aspect of living in a house, right, can be, to a certain extent, be replicated. When I was with my grandparents, uh, I think that uh, there are some very, very uh, unique values and uh, I and I always look forward to the kind of stories they tell me. That's like a very, very unique part of having grandparents ar around, other than the obvious, you know, like that they can be, uh, they can take care of them all through, you know, during their schooling hours when we are away. In the future, it will still just as popular or rampant because rising housing prices as well as the utilities and maybe for the initial stage where you have your parents to help out with the kids, uh, especially when both are working parents, I think it will stay. We love that, that there is this experience, even for his parents. It's something that I think as a community and as a society, we are open to embracing because there is so much value in it. There's so much stories, the, the narrative of what they have been through and sharing it with a younger generation. It's learning dialects, it's learning cooking, you know. Um, it's coming together and learning how to love and share.